Um, so we're going to move into the word. Um, so we have our very own new pastor today with us. Woo! So so glad to be here tonight. In fact, you guys are blessed, all right? and I'll tell you why. Um, I usually don't travel the week of RY major events. So, we have our conference this weekend. I'm on a three days fasting and prayer, so I don't really go anywhere. But for me to come here tonight, I came because of someone. And I came because God has a word for you and I to hear. And I pray this evening you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the theme for our wife this year is Christ in you. Christ in you. And it's, it is interesting. In fact, the scripture, the scripture that says, it says Colossians 1 and 27. It says, the second prophet, it said, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you know what gives you glory in life? What gives you glory in everything is because Christ is in you. A lot of people, a lot of people have glory, but there is no hope for that glory. It is Christ that is in you that gives you hope for the glory. It is because you have Christ. Josh, it is because of Christ that he says, I will come back and testify. Because it is not in, it is Christ in him. Okay, scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, if you, if you don't have Christ, you have nothing. Because without Christ, we are nothing and we can do nothing. Nothing will become nothing. When you are something, you can do something. So, I really want to encourage you tonight to please follow my line of thoughts tonight. Okay, because Christ in you will give hope to your academics. Mm -hmm. Christ in you will say, I've read all night. In fact, my brain is saturated. My brain needs to rest. I've just been reading. But I'm not negative. I am positive because there is Christ in me. Mm -hmm. Okay? But tonight, um, I need someone to please read for us Job 22, verse 21 to 29. All I'm going to speak on tonight is on those verses. Job chapter 22, verse 21 to verse 29. Anyone who can read out loud 
forum so that we can all hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right, Submit to God and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. If you give up your lust for money and throw your precious gold into the river, the Almighty himself will be your treasure. He will be your precious silver. Then you will take delight in the Almighty and look up to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows to him. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do and light will shine on the road ahead of you. If people are in trouble and you say, help them, God will save them. Amen. Can you read the first two lines again? Uh, 21. 21. Submit to God and you will have peace. Then things will go well for you. So what will make your academics to go well? What will make you have peace this academic year is your submission to God. If you don't submit to God, ladies and gentlemen, there is no way you can have peace. There is no way, I'm not cursing you, there is no way things will go. Scripture said it. He says, submit to God. You know, sometimes we need to read the scripture the other way around. And say, that scripture said that if you don't submit to God, things will go well with you. That's what it says. But the, other, the, the one that we read now, it looks cool. But if he says, if you don't submit to God, your academics won't go well. It's a bit harsh, but that is, that, that's what scripture says. So I want to encourage us this evening and this year that please submit to God. If you submit to God, you see, the closer you are to God, the closer God is to you. You determine how close you are to God. If you spend 10 minutes with God, guess what? God will spend 10 minutes with you. If you spend two hours with your, with your books, you will get two hours worth of information. If you, get, if you spend ten minutes, you will get ten minutes worth of information. Except God gives you grace because you have been doing the work of God. Because when I was a student, I spent more time in church than in my academics. So when I go to the library, I ask for speed. What my friends are doing in six hours, I get it done in two hours. Because I'm like, God, ha, I've been in church, I've been fasting and praying, and I'm not lazy. So you must, you must favor me. Okay, because God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you're seeking God diligently, he will reward you. Okay? Um, but tonight, I see, I'm not going to go into detail about Christ in you. When you come this weekend, you will learn that. But I want to, I want to, I want to share two thoughts with us. The first one is the benefits of Christ in you. Because, um, you see, Christ in you, there are benefits. There are things that will benefit you. You see, when we say get close to Christ, whether or not Christ is in you, it does not change the person of Christ. If you choose not to come to Christ, it doesn't make Christ small. You know, there's not that says you are big, 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 big. You are that, 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 that. You are. So God is big, regardless of what you do or what you don't do. Does that make sense? So you getting close to God is for your own benefit. It's for my own interest. Nothing you do or you don't do change the person and the personality of God. If you understand that, then you know that when your pastors, when your leaders are pushing you, it's for your own good. Oh, you have to be coming to church. You are trying to give excuses why you are not coming. You have deadline. The deadline, the deadline is already dead. <laughs> if you have deadline, you are already dead. dead. Why don't you come to church and have life? You know. Um, so I've got about I've got about five or six benefits. There's so many benefits, but I've just picked. I've just picked this five. The first one is, um, when you have Christ in you, you'll be built up. You'll be like a pillar. You know, this building is well built. That when, when it's winter, when it's windy, this building is standing. Why? Because it is well built. When you have Christ in you, when life throws things at you, because, let me tell you something, life will throw so many things at you. Some of them is your own fault. Some of them is your own stupidity. For some, you have no clue about them. No, because some of you, 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 you are living in sin. Now you are complaining. You didn't read your book. You don't have that you failed your exam. You will fail. Because if you fail to, that means you are planning to fail. You have deadline tomorrow, and you are chilling with a friend. If you are not reading your books, you are not doing your coursework. You are already planning the results for yourself. Okay? But, you see, life will throw things at you. Sometimes it is your fault. Sometimes it's not, but because you are well built, mm. you are not you are not shaken, you are not movable, you are standing because there is something in you that is helping you. Okay, 
when we, be, when, when we know Christ, we become spiritually strong. When Christ is in us, we become robust men and women. Okay, we become the Daniel kind. Daniel said to the king that we will not bow down to you. Even if you throw us inside the fire. Because there is something in us. You see, when you have Christ in you and it is real, it, it is genuine. It is Christ that will speak on your behalf. I believe that it was Christ that spoke for Daniel. It wasn't Daniel. It was the spirit in Daniel that spoke, not Daniel. Because what he was saying didn't make sense. The people threatened him, it didn't make sense. If I went, he was in the fire. There were four of them, they became five. And I, you can imagine they were in fire and they were, they were still singing praise and worship. They were dancing. They were watching. They were like, ah, these people, they have to believe them. But when, when Christ is not in you, when you face trials, when you face life issues, you give up, you give in. You give up, you give in. You see, if Christ is not in you, then you are not in Christ. A lot of people think they are in Christ. And I tell you, I can say I'm Barack Obama's friend. I love him. But if he doesn't call me his friend, we are not friends. <laughs> Do you get that? <laughs> I can say I'm your friend. But if you don't say you're my friend, then we are not friends. Mm. So you can say you are in Christ. But if Christ is not in you, then you are not in Christ. Because Christ is, the, is, the, is a factor. If Christ is in you, then you are in Christ indeed. So I want to encourage you. The second, the second point is you will... When you have Christ in you, I love this, you will overcome sin. You see, I was in Radical Youth Leeds last week, Monday, and we did a study on sin. And I said that sin is universal. It doesn't matter whether you are in Leicester or you are in London or Lagos or Abuja, sin is there. <laughs> you cannot accept God and grace. You cannot live a life above sin. Because sin, in fact, you and I, we are born into sin. The nature of a man is sinful nature. Okay, but when you have Christ in you, you will, you, will, you will live a life above sin because it is not you. It is Christ that is living his life through you. You know, earlier this evening, I was in Norton, I was in the HQ, and we're praying for the conference. And I let pray for about 40 minutes before I left. And, um, and then I said that when God wants to work, God needs the vessel, and the devil needs the vessel. That some want to honor and some want to dishonor. So which vessel are you? But if you have Christ in you, you'll be a vessel unto honor. Okay? Have you dealt drastically with all the sins and every doubt in your life? You know, some people they say they are, they are, there is Christ in them and they are comfortable in sin. My God. <laughs> <That's so beautiful. laughs> can you say you are in Christ? And can you say it is an insult on the person and the integrity of Christ that Christ is in you and you have boyfriend, you are sleeping together. And you are and you are you are not having sex, but you are you are almost dead. Mm. You know, your brain cannot tell between reality and perception. Your brain cannot tell. Your brain, no, no, I don't want to go there. Or you will leave, you, your body is the temple of Christ. Mm. Christ is wow. in you. Your body is the temple. If Christ is in you, you are careful where your, where your body goes. Oh, it's my friend's birthday. He's in the club and you are going, God punish the devil. <laughs> and it's more than you. <laughs> okay, let's move on because of my time. The top benefit of having Christ in you. The top benefit, you will be greatly enriched. When you have Christ in you, you will live an abundant life. When you have Christ in you, you will possess your possession. When you have Christ in you, you experience perfect peace. When, when life, when, when you have so many deadlines and your friends are worried, you have peace. Because, in fact, in fact you tell your friends, they don't understand. They say, how come you are smiling? It is God. Only those who are in Christ will understand that phrase. It seems cliche. Because it, it is God. How did you get this first class? It is God. Or young believers friend will think, ah, is it God to write it for you? But they don't they, they, they just will never know. Does that make sense? You can imagine if I'm a co-CEO with Richard Branson. Everything that he holds at home. If I don't do like this, then people will come. I will call those things they were not as though they were. Because he has given me some of his inheritance. So you possess your possess, you have you have sufficient grace, you have power to witness. When Christ is in you, 
when your housemates are going to the club, you tell them, guys, don't go. You say you are Christian. You, are, you become uncomfortable with them. You won't say, well, it's not my business. You are my brother's keeper. When I was a student, all my, all my flatmates were living together. They cannot go out to the club. Why? When I'm in this house, for calling the Because I will preach to them. The power to witness. You just you are just uncomfortable with it because you have Christ in you. If, you. if they are not your friends, if you don't know them, if they are unbelievers, then there's nothing you can do about them. But if they claim to be Christian mm -hmm. and they claim to be born again, ah, they are in a good problem. I will fire them off. They will, become, they, will, they will become serious by fire, by force. When I was a student, my friends were calling me Christian brother. Because I preach Christ to them. Another benefit of Christ in you, you will delight in the Lord. A lot of people say they have, they have Christ is in them. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to serve in church. You have to beg them. Have you waking up? Oh, Pastor, I'm not coming today. I overslept. Well, you don't overslept in this exam. You don't overslept if you have work. But when it comes to church on Sunday, you oversleep. We, 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 we bound that spirit of sleep in your life. <laughs> that spirit that will be to oversleep. We bind it in the name of Jesus. When, when you have Christ, you will delight in God. The things that, that, that God does Thing that God delights in is what you delight in. Because the best way to serve is in church. Because it is the house of God. That's why pray before you attend any church. God will plant you where you will grow. Okay? Um, another benefit of Christ in you is answers to prayer. When you have Christ in you, it is, it is the people who really know God intimately who receives answers to their prayer. You can imagine somebody don't know me, they're asking me, they're asking me to give them money. I won't even answer them. I won't even answer them. Okay, it is those who know God intimately. The reason why you ask your friend are not answered because you are living a double life. You are you are not here, you are not there. You are lukewarm. Just people be cold. Let's know you are a cold blooded animal. And enjoy your coldness. Enjoy your cold. Don't say you are one, one minute you are in Christ. The next minute you are out of Christ. Oh, God punish you. <laughs> so I want to encourage you. There are so many benefits if you have Christ in us. There are so many benefits. And I can go on and on and on. Prayer is the great privilege of every Christian. Prayer is a privilege for you and I. To communicate with the queen is a privilege. How much more to communicate with God? As I round up this, this evening, before we pray, four ways for others to see Christ in you. You see, there are two benefits. There are, see, Christ in you is in two ways. Your, what you will gain from Christ in you and what others would benefit from you. There is no point that I carry Christ and I'm not able to share with my, my, my colleagues. Because you and I, some of you are here today because somebody preached Christ to you. The Christ in them, they preached it to you and you became born again. So, who are you preaching Christ to? Who is your life preaching Christ to? Some of you, your, your plan doesn't even know you are Christian. As you are coming to Arad this Monday now, tell them I'm going somewhere in it. <laughs> tell them you are coming to fellowship, be proud of it. You see, if you are not proud of Christ, Christ will be proud of you. The first way is hearing me. Okay, I need someone to play the Colossians 4 and verse 6. Very quickly. Colossians 4 and verse 6. Colossians, yeah, go on. Let your speech be always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Let your word be seasoned with salt. You see. People hear what you are saying. You call yourself Christ is in you. And when you're on the phone, you're swearing, you're cursing, what you are saying does not defeat Christ. What you're saying, it does not, it does not show that there is Christ in you. You know, you know, actions speak like a voice. People, people are hearing you. So it is important that the words we use with others, even our friends, it is important that they are seasoned with salt. It is important that they are godly. Don't just, don't just say you, you believe in God by, by, by going to church, by, your, by what you say, by what you do, because people, people will hear you. Okay? So what, I, what they are hearing is this seasoning with salt. If it is not, then there's a problem. Okay? 
The second way is seeing you. Okay. The scripture says, Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine that people will see your good works. Some people, they are unable to hear you because they are not around you that much, but they are, see, they are watching you. You say, Christ, you want to preach. Some of you, the only reason why you can't preach Christ to your flatmate is because every now and then you also go to the club with them. So how can you preach to them? The lifestyle you are living, you can't preach to them. That's, that's one of the biggest problems. People are seeing you. People, people, people may not get a chance to hear what you are saying, but action speaks a lot louder than words. Okay? So it is important for you and I, our lifestyle will, 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 will let people know. Our lifestyle will reveal if Christ is truly in you or not. So I want to encourage you the things that you are doing, if it is not glorifying God, it's glorifying the devil. Case closed. There is no, there is no way to lie. If it is not glorifying God, it's glorifying the devil. So my question is, your daily lifestyle, in fact, your secret life, is it glorifying God? Mm -hmm. Your secret life, what you do in your closet, is it glorifying God? Mm -hmm. If it is not glorifying God, it's glorifying the devil. And I pray God will give us grace to, 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 to repent in the name of Jesus. Um, the third way is helping others. In life, there are people in life who could have done evil to us. And we get a chance to help them and we refuse to because of the past. That is not Christ's life. That is not Christ's life. And people are watching. You know, people have told me, I can be a younger person. I told you that time they were evil, they were this, but I'm doing it unto God and not unto them. And they say, Wow, that's good. I should be doing the same. I just preach Christ to them. Because what we, you know, when I was a student, I this thing normally that normally that like this phrase that was that was invoked then. Eh? WWJD, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. Before you do anything, else, what would Jesus do? If Jesus would not do it, why should I? So it is important for you and I. When you get a chance to do good, you should do it. It is important that we help people. It is, it is, it is part of reflecting Christ in us. You see, by the time you help people that much and that well, they want to know about your Christ. They want to know about your Christ. And finally, unconditional love. And this I want to give it for us. Mark chapter 12 and verse 31. As we're looking for that scripture, the greatest gift, the greatest gift that you can give to anyone is to love them unconditionally, to love them regardless, to love them no matter the matter. Even if it does not matter, <laughs> love them because God matters. Love them anyhow, love them, and let it be genuine love. <clears throat> Who's reading for us? Mark 12, 31. The second is like it. That's it. There's no other command that is greater than that. If you love yourself, the way you love yourself, you love your neighbors. Let us buy. <coughs> Let us buy it. Now, life is about choices, and life is full of choices. And it's interesting because all that I've said now by a physical man is just impossible. If you don't have Christ, you can't do any of this. If you start to do them on your own power, on your own strength, you will give up. But if Christ is in you, you'll be able to achieve this. And tonight, I want to give us a chance. You are not born again. You are not born again. You don't know Christ. If you don't know Christ, guess what? Christ don't know you. It's as simple as that. If you are here tonight and you are not born again, and you would like to give your life to Christ because you want this Christ is in you, please lift up your hand. I would like to pray with you. You are not born again. You are not born again. And also, if you are here, you are backslidden. Your relationship with God is, is if you, you know, I often tell people this, if the trumpet you sound now, and you cannot make it, then there's a problem. Then Christ is not in you. So if you are here, you are 
activate in your faith, you would like to get to know God more. Relationship with God is not soon. Please lift up your hand. I'd like to pray with you. And if you see, this is between you and God. Please, if, if this has nothing to do with anybody, this is you and God. Please, I would like all of you who have put your hand up to please speak to Pastor Mewa after the service. I believe you all know Pastor Mewa. Is. If you don't know him, come and meet him. Okay, it is important that Christ is in you. Because if not, you live a life of struggle. You are meant to enjoy life and not endure life. When as a Christian, you begin to endure life. There is a problem. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, your children tonight who raise up their hand, we pray, O oh Lord God, that whatever is in them, whatever is blocking their relationship, but I help them to overcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give them grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight if they are sincere enough to put up their hand. I pray because you are not ashamed of Christ, Christ will not be ashamed of you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone here tonight, oh Lord God, that you will continue to grow in faith and in our understanding of you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Just give me two more minutes. Any question? Anyone have any question for me? The more you ask, the more you know. If you don't, God bless you. That's right. You see, the, the thing is, like I said, like I said now, if you have a naughty neighbor, if you have a neighbor who is evil, how do you love them? Does that make sense? But when you have Christ in you, you will, you will, you will, some people, even though you are talking to them, because you don't really like them, you are talking with attitude. You are talking with, mm, don't come. <laughs> Does that make sense? But because you have Christ in you, you will, you will even send them a Christmas gift card because it is genuine. It is not, you may not, you may not have, you, you may not be close friends with them, but you know that in your heart of hearts, you are, you, you are in peace with them. Does that make sense? And it is easier to do because it is Christ that will do it through you. There are people that have, have spoken to rashly, and I get, and later I get corrected, and I'm going to bed, I don't have peace. I have no Christ to say, well, I'm talking to that person, they are not happy with you. The problem is I'm poor, but it's okay. I need to see you. And we'll make peace. You know, so, but if Christ is going to be like, I'm the pastor, I can talk to you anyhow, I can do whatever I like. And you know, that's not true. And because there is Christ in me, I won't be able to sleep. You will say, no, 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 I'm not happy what you said. Go and apologize. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, so you'll be able to, if Christ helps you be able to do that. Is that okay? Any more questions? Yeah. If you don't love yourself, that means there's a, there's a foundational problem. As scripture says, if the foundation be destroyed, can the righteous do? If you don't love you, you can't love me. You need to first love you. I need to first love me to love you. So if you don't love you, that means there's a problem. A lot of people don't love themselves because of what people have said about them. Oh, you are ugly, you are this, you are that, you are not big. After your, after your siblings, you are the worst, you are this, you are that. Because of that, they don't love themselves. So we need to work on that because if you don't love you, you can't love others. Because some people are stingy to themselves. When they have their friends, they will stingy to them. Oh, let's go and eat. Let's go to KFC. Oh, let's go now. No, 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 no. Same chicken and cheese. Because themselves, they are stingy to themselves. When they are hungry, they will go to KFC, they will buy chaps, they will buy, chaps, they will buy um, uh, snack box, one ninety nine. They will say it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so, but, but we need to love ourselves because Christ loves you. So, if we don't love you, of course, you can't love others. Because, you know, so we need to pray, we need to understand that you need to love yourself because you are, you are, you are the image of God. If you love you, then you can love others. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, last question. Okay, that's fine. Um, when I'm Christ gave the foundation of God, yes, he reminded me of the scripture that said God is love, and God did not have God, did not have God, so he did so. And I wanted to say that loving right starts with the foundation of Christ in me, because Christ is love, because that um, um, Christ knows how to love, love exists in Christ, so to love right is to be Christ. And then if you have Christ, he could give you the love yourself, and he could give you to protect that love on the other side. Yeah, then John Verse 17, saying God is love. And, and, and actually, another meaning of God is love. So when people say love is the greatest, it means that God is the greatest. So for you to love, you have to know God. You see people say, I'm in love, they repeat each other, fuck out of love. <laughs> I love you, I love her, they stab themselves, fuck out of love. That's not love. Yeah, people do that. You know, but when you, when, when you know God, you know what love is. You know it's unconditional. It is not selfish. Love is not about you. It's about the person you're dealing with. Does that make sense? Um, because I've taken too much of my time. I'm too here. God bless you. And God bless you.